नैके अमृतमसु परे नाक निहित गुहायां विभ्राजते दज्जत विशंती वेदात विज्ञान सुनिश्चिता संन्यास योगायुद्ध सवा ते ब्रह्म लोके तो परा आंतरे परामृतात्मुच्यंति सर्वे दक्षम विपापम परमे स्वभूत युंडरीक सर्गस्थम तत्रा दक्षम गगनम विशोकस्तस्दुपाशित यो वेदादस्वर प्रोक्त वेदाते चतिष्ठि तस् प्रकृतिलीन से यहाँ न त्र सूर्यो भाति न चंद्र तारक नेमा विद्युत भाति कमे भातमुभाति तस् भाषा सर्वद विभाति ओं हर हर नम पार्वती पत हर हर महादेव श्री सद्गुनाथ महाराज की जय हरि ओम लेट्स डू थ्री ओम्स एंड सहना ओतु एंड गुरु स्त्रोत्र ओ सह नौ भुन सह वीर करेजस्वीनाधीतमस्तुमाशा ओ शाति 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 स्त्रोत्र अखंडमंडलाकार व्या चराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम अज्ञातिरा ज्ञाजनशलाकया चक्षुर्मील ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम स्थावर जंगम व्याप्त यचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम चिन्मय व्यात्सव त्रैलोक्यम सचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तमेव माता च पिता बंधुश्च सखात्मेव विद्याद्रविड़ेवेव so we are doing the second volley of the first chapter of kathopanishad where the teacher is glorifying the teaching as well as the student that he has in fact when i was in the same position as you were even though i knew that all these pleasures in life are temporary but still i went for it 
and to get this post as Yamadharma Raja. So, number one, Yamadharma Raja position is also a post that everybody can apply for it, provided you are qualified for it. And Yamadharma Raja must. So, now he knew that, that the, these all are temporary, and Nachiketas, when he was offered all these things, he rejected it. Therefore, you are went on trying to praise the student that he has and the knowledge that he has, the, the disparity that he has or dispassion. And Nachiketa he says, I don't know how long he's. But if you think I am qualified, please teach me that knowledge. So he formalized again. So in the first volley, he asked a question, if you remember, where he asked, please teach me a ritual that can take people to the higher lokas. So obviously he is not talking about the death of the physical body, but therefore he is asking what remains after death of anything. That means uh, that which remains changeless in all the changing things. That remains even when if the mind dies or if the subtle body also dies or if the causal body also dies, that for all bodies die, when that happens, is there something that remains? And that's what he was asking at that time. Now in the sloka 14 of this second valley, he crystallizes that he knows, he knows exactly what he wants and that's what we were doing last time. So in this very famous sloka of Nachiketa scene here, he's defining what exactly the knowledge that he wants, which is difficult even for the gods to know clearly. And that's what we were doing in the last class. Sloka 14. Anyatra dharmat, anyatra adharmat, anyatra dharmat, anyatra adharmat, anyatra asmat kruta kruta, anyatra asmat kruta kruta, anyatra bhuta cha bhavya bhava bhavya cha, anyatra bhuta cha bhavya cha, yatat pasyati tat vada. Tatpasyati tatvada <coughs> together. Anyatra dharmat, anyatra adharmat, anyatra asmat, kruta kruta, anyatra bhuta cha bhavya Yet tatpasyati tatvada. So, what is that I want to know? Please teach me that which is beyond dharma and beyond. Adharma. Beyond dharma is it has to be adharma. No, it's beyond adharma also. That which is beyond the merits and demerits. That's beyond everything that you can really classify as this or that. So any dvandvas, all are essentially the two things, sukham, dukkham, manam, avamanam, apamanam, and all the sitosh, nasoka, dukkeshu. So all those are the dual, dual things that goes, punyam, papam, etc. So it is here dharma, so virtues or the vices, adharma, it is beyond all that. So that's what I want to know. So anyat asmat, that's other than this, other than this, this means anything that I can point out as this, 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 other than any of that. So it is not something objectifiable, it is this that I am asking about. So it is something beyond. Kruta akrutat. Kruta is that which is form and which is result of something. Akruta, that which is a cause for it. So it's beyond the cause and effect relationships. That means beyond the concept of time itself. Anyatra bhuta cha bhavya cha. It is that which is beyond the past and beyond the future. Beyond the past means anything that happened in the past or anything beyond the future. So what's left is only present, right? <laughs> so he didn't add present. But even beyond the present, because the present itself is where the past is meeting the future, and the smaller and smaller you divide, the present itself disappears. So even beyond the present also is included. That yattas pasyati, is it something like that? It's all imaginations because there is nothing like that beyond, uh, you know, dandas, you know, either this or that, either this or that, either good or bad. So what is that beyond good and beyond bad? And 
He says, yatat pasyati, that which you know, that I know. <laughs> that which you know, and from the conversation, I know that you know. Therefore, please tatvada, please teach me that. So, this is the crystallization of his question itself. And from that itself, you can see the maturity of the boy, the nine-year-old boy. He knows exactly what he wants, why he rejected all other things, and why he needs this. And, and so, you don't have to give him, you cannot give him any cock and bull stories for him. So, this is the truth that he is going after. So, with that, the Rachiketa's question is finalized. And Yamadhar Maharaja starts teaching. So, the, from up to this is called Upodghatam. Upodghatam is a, a situation where a student and the teacher is brought in. So, in each of the scriptures, even Bhagavad Gita, first whole chapter, and even the second chapter up to the up to the sloka line, we have only Upodghatam. It's only introduction of that. Only Krishna start teaching once surrendered. Once Arjuna surrendered, says Sishyastayam Sadhimam Tvam Prapannam, then says, please Bhuhitan Ve, please teach me that which is Sreyaschan Bhuhitan Ve. So that tell me, teach me only when he found a student, Krishna start teaching, says Gadasu Nagadasumcha. So that up to that is Upodgata. In fact, Shankara starts commentary only from that on. So other thing is only story for us. But here, the Yamadharma Raja is starting the story now. Story, not the story, the teaching itself. But before he goes into the teaching of the of the absolute truth, he gives upasana. He gives the teaching of Unkara Upasana. So he tells you one can do to purification of the mind to reach the to the higher state through Om Upasana. So essentially, it is first three slokas that we do, these are 15, 16 and 17, deals with Omkara aspect of it. And this is a glorification of the Omkara and what you gain by Omkara. So Omkara Upasana we learn from the Taitiri Upanishad also. And the essence of Omkara we learn from the Mandukya Upanishad also. So here, we will read the sloka 15. Sarve Veda Yatpadam Amananti Sarve Veda Yatpadam Amananti Tapamsi Sarvani Chayat Vadanti Tapamsi Sarvani Chayat Vadanti Adichanto Brahmacharyam Charanti Adichanto Brahmacharyam Charanti Tate Padam Sangrahe Bravimi Tatte padam sangrahe na bhavimi. Om it the next Om it chetat Om it chetat. I stopped it so <laughs> So Tatte padam sangrahe na bhavimi. End of this end of the statement. And he says Om. Iti etatu. Okay. So I was wondering what happened. Did I say something or some other sloka? <laughs> Suddenly everybody stopped. So, Sarve Vedaha, this Unkara, this is Unkara aspect, glorification of the Unkara. Unkara is supposed to be the essence of all Vedas. So, any uh, mantra starts with Unkara. And Upasana starts with, you know, all other japa and all that with Omkara plus any mantra, Ishta Devata mantra is, is there. And therefore, this Omkara is Sarva Veda Yat Padam Amananti, Sarva Vedaha, so all Vedas. So, Yat Padam, Padam here is Pajyate Yat Padam, that which is one that takes you to that, which means it is the goal the essential goal. So, all Vedas point out this as the goal. Yatpadam, Amananti, they proclaim that this is the goal of all the Ved of the of the purpose of the Vedas. Tapamsi Sarvani. So, it is also goal. Amananti is, is also Tapamsi Sarvani Tapamsi. All austerities ultimately end up to this. So, Tapas 
is essentially see tapaha manaschendriyanam hi ekagriyam paramam tapam this is the definition of tapas is any austerity is that which is that which takes the mind manas indriyana manas and indriyas the mind and the sense organs so any austerity is meant for ultimately for ekagriyam he indeed for ekagriyam paramam tapaha for concentrating the mind on one aspect so all tapas austerities when you stand on one leg all the puranas are only tapas but in real tapas is austerities that is meant for controlling the mind because that's you know people do vratams and this and that so all austerities for what to control the mind and control the indriyas and supposedly to concentrate on something else so that's what ekadasi Ekadasi is <laughs> Ekadasi Pratham, right? Ekadasi is eleventh day. So eleventh day is what? Why? Why eleventh day? So means Dasha is ten. So Dasha is ten involves Pancha Karmendriyas, Pancha Jnanendriyas, and all those ten are and Ekam. The eleventh one is. the mind all put together is concentrating withdrawing from ordinary things that are indulging sense inputs so withdrawing on that so that's what upavasam means where i am controlling not only what is taking through the mouth at anything that is being taken through all the five senses that's how upavasam and redirecting the mind to the higher for the world say once i control i had to do that with the control mind i had to redirect the mind i say rasavarjam rasopyasya parandrushtva nivartade you know in the bhagavad gita otherwise there is a taste for it you know sitting here i want to do ekadasi then only you know she start doing pakodis and all those things that i like all the smell is coming and i want to do ekadasi <laughs> so rasavarjam the taste for the rasam is still there even though i am controlling it so it is that rasavarjam rasapyasya parandrushto anivartate by keeping the mind to the higher i automatically control is what swami chimanda calls called sanyasa yoga sanyasa means you have to renounce but you can only renounce you can withdraw by holding on to something higher so when you are climbing up first you all hold on to something then you can release the bottom then hold on to something that's how you climb right so first you have to hold on to his feet then you can release the other things so to the higher so that is the real tapas and and what is the purpose of the tapam si sarvani cha yad vadanti all all austerities in fact is essentially towards reaching that goal what is that goal Om iti etat. That goal is Om iti. That is being specified as Om. And here is this sloka is only glorifying that Omkara. Sarvani cha yad vadanti. So this, in fact, is that which is glorified, that which is being uh, proclaimed. Yadichanti. यदिच्छन्तो ब्रह्मचर्यम चरन्ति सो यदिच्छन्तो हा ब्रह्मचर्यम चरन्ति डिजायरिंग व्हिच डिजायरिंग दैट पोजीशन दैट हाईएस्ट पोजीशन दैट इज बीइंग पॉइंटेड आउट व्हिच इज गोइंग टू टेल हिम दैट बीइंग पॉइंटेड आउट सो एवरीबॉडी वांट्स टू विथड्रॉ देयर माइंड एंड डू द ऑस्टेरिटीज एंड वांट टू डू ब्रह्मचर्यम ब्रह्मचर्यम मींस ई स्टडी ऑफ द वेदास एंड ऑल दैट आल्सो द गोइंग टू एस टू द टू द गुरुकला एंड कंटिन्यू ऑल दिस प्रोसेस सो ब्रह्मचर्यम अहिंसा ब्रह्मचर्यम दिस आर द पार्ट ऑफ द व्रतम हियर सो हियर ब्रह्मचर्यम इज इन्वॉल्विंग द गेनिंग द नॉलेज ऑफ द वेदास so lead a life devoted to the study that's what essentially brahmacharyam charanti adichanti to desiring which desiring that highest position that is being pointed out by omkara and everybody goes through brahmacharyam means a this dis- dis- disciplined life that one one does tatte padam that goal to you sangrahena in short in summary bruvi me i am going to teach first so he wanted to know the highest truth 
But first, before that, for through Nachiketa, he is teaching us those who have not prepared their mind, purified, and this is a method of Omkara. So, for all other grohasthas and all that, we take the mantra of some Ishtadevata called Pratima. Pratima is a form. Krishna, Vishnu or some form we take, right? And uh, this is called Pratika. Unkara is called Pratika where it is formless form. There is no specific form, but it is formless form, yet it is a form type where one can invoke. And uh, most of the sannyasis, they take Unkara as the, the, the part of the Japa. And the Grihasthas are not supposed to Unkara supposedly because they may become sannyasins. <laughs> so, <laughs> idea is that it is meant for purifying uplift because you start vairagyam comes with that process. Part of it is you start withdrawing yourself from that. So, in this, Omkara is going to talk about two types of upasana. So, this lokas from now on you will see from the Kathopanishad is somewhat parallel to Bhagavad Gita. Many of the slokas from the Kathopanishad as though literally lift out of the Kathopanishad and put it in the Krishna. Krishna took this in that uh, uh, and expressed in some form. Krishna or Vyasa has taken this from the Kathopanishad and this and you will see that it's mostly in the second chapter you see a lot of the slokas from the Kathopanishad itself. And the same statement, in fact, Krishna makes in the 8th level, in the, in the eighth chapter, Yadaksharam Veda Vido Vidanti Visanti Yajatayo Vitaragaha Yadichanto Brahmacharyam Charanti Tatti Padam Sangrahe Na Pravichi. Exactly somewhat similar statement Krishna makes in the 8th chapter about Omkara. Now, this Omkara denotes, in the next sloka, is going to tell us about the Omkara, both from the point of Saguna as well as Nirguna. So, it covers both of it. And in the, in the Mandukya, the first mantra talks about Omkara, introduces Omkara, then he talks about Avastatrayam, the waking state, dream state and deep sleep state. So, those who want to know, they can get from the Advaitin list. Or Advaita Forum, Advaita Forum, the, ta the talks are available. So, in the, uh, we'll read the next sloka, then we will go into the details. So, now we are talking about the Omkara now. Yetad Jevacharam Brahma Tadje vacharam brahma, e tadje vacharam param, e tadje vacharam param, e tadje vacharam yatva, e tadje vacharam yatva, yo yadichanti tasya tatu, yo yadichanti tasya tatu. Together, e tadje vacharam brahma. Etadje vacharam param, etadje vacharam yatva, yo yadichanti tasya tatu. So here both are being pointed out, the saguna and neguna aspect of the Brahman. So if you look at the Mandukya mantra, Mandukya mantra, first mantra of the Mandukya Upanishad, the Agama Prakarana, says, Om itcheta dachara medagam sarvam. Tasyopa Vyakyanam Bhutam Bhavad Bhavishya Diti Sarvam Omkara Meva Yachanya Trilokati Tam Tadapi Omkara Meva This is from the Mandukya. So now, what does this mean? Omkara means it's, it's you know, there are lots of descriptions of Omkara itself. Etad Ji Etad the mean etat means etat hi eva acharam brahma etat this indeed this indeed eva alone acharam charam is that which is get destroyed acharam is indestructible that brahma this indeed is the index indestructible brahma which one omkar 
So that's why we have ohm in the top. And what is ohm? Swami so used to tell us, you know, in the, in the beginning classes. So let there be x number of mangoes in that. So what is x? If we know x, we solve the problem, it's already solved. <laughs> so you have to find out x by going through all the process, then deduce x is equal to this. So what is that Omkara is either that which is one Aksharam, Aksharam is also one word, letter, and Aksharam is also that beyond the Charam, that which is indestructible, and that is Brahman. Okay, statement. This has a two meanings, obviously. So, Brahman, when it says, I, identifying with that, I see everything, the world. So, everything is nothing but the Brahman only, because Brahman is infinite. So, everything is that I see is around us in, is infinite. Uh, in the, the whole, is creation itself, with the varieties of words, objects and all that, is nothing but Om. So, how can that be nothing but Om? Because Om involves Akara, Ukara, Makaram, right? Om Chika, Aksharam, Brahma, Akara, Ukara, Makaram, Iti. So, I, Om itself contains the first letter A, and until I close my mouth, mm. so between every letters, all are included between A and the end of my mouth, end of mm, and then I cannot say much. So, it includes all the letters in the Omkara itself, and the letters are used to denote any object. So, any object is nothing but a word, Nya Nama, right? And the word involves letters. So, I specify every object in the universe using this letter from A to Ma, everything else. So, by these letters, everything included, whole universe is included in this because I can only otherwise, I cannot make any more sounds to designate. If I had to communicate an object, something object, I had to use the sound that is meaningful and I give some sounds and give a meaning to it using the letters that are involved. So, this etad, this unkara, therefore covers all the objects in the universe. So, that cannot be anything other. Like so that's why in the in the Mandukya Upanishad it starts Om Ityeta Dakshana Medagum Sarvam. So Idam Sarvam, this entire Sarvam is nothing but Etat, is nothing but that it Om Iti Etat. That word Om itself is this whole entire universe. That itself is a scriptural statement. That's one aspect of it. That is from the point of Vyaktam, that is point for manifestations. Right? All the objects are nothing but. Now, the scripture says, what was there is existence before, and that it's a Brahman before, and he himself became many. So, what is the essence of every object that we see? So, that is also Brahman, and that is in fact true. So, now we are talking about not the names and forms, but that which pervades and provides the support for all the names and forms, that indeed is everything. So, that which is pervading everything and supporting everything, yet I cannot see it and I cannot name it, but what I am naming is only that because of which all the objects seem to be there and therefore, that Nirguna Brahma is also being Brahman pointed out by Omkara only. Because in Omkara, Akara, Ukara, Makara and then silence, right, Om. So, in the silence from which the whole world is rising, because all the sounds are coming from the silence, they are sustained by the silence because each word is distinguished between the silence only. If the two, if there is no silence between the two words, then I cannot distinguish the letters. So, the silence is there that supporting and giving the validity for differentiating one letter from the other letter, one object from the other object from the externally, but one letter from the other letter and that silence into which the all all the all the letters rise and therefore all the words rise and therefore objects that are designated by the world rise and when i when i go back it goes into silence and that is from which the whole world came by which it is sustained into which it goes back is brahman also so both from the saguna point from the nirguna point
ईस् ब्रह्मन सो एत अक्षर ब्रह्म सो इन दिस बोथ फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ अक्षर इज द लेटर एंड अक्षर फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ द द इंडिस्ट्रक्टबल और इम्यूटबल दट ब्रह्मन बोथ आर बीइंग पॉइंटेड आउट इन दिस स्टेटमेंट आल्सो एत जीवाक्षर परम दट एत ही एवा अक्षर परम दट विच इज supreme param is that which is supreme that which is beyond there is nothing beyond that is that is omkara omkara alone and that becomes a upasana for me so i can do upasana of taking the name of the lord that is called pratima where i invoke the presence of the lord of the entire universe in that form that is a vishnu form krishna form any form but what i am invoking is formless form and using a form as a basis form is only alambalam that's going to come in the next shloka it's only a means for me to go beyond and in the same way here that etad hi eva aksharam brahma that which is brahman which is the infinite brahman which is the form in the form of a now invoking in the form of a pratima which is an an idol but when i let's say when i was saluting the flag we are not saluting piece of cloth but we are saluting the nation in the same way when we are invoking the the presence of the totality in that locality we are essentially trying to think of that total in the process that becomes upasana upasana is invocation of something into here just like we put in the in the puja what is the turmeric powder we put say ganesha avahaya i mean right lord ganesha please come from then on it's ganesha only not not no more turmeric powder paste so we in we can invoke the totality in small as that becomes an upasana so it's from the upasana point there is a brahma upasana also being pointed out and from the knowledge point say so nirguna then it is pointing out that which pervades the whole thing but which cannot be expressed any way in that form also it is said so, and therefore it is param there is supreme that means there is nothing beyond it so nothing beyond from both points from the saguna saguna point and nirguna point because saguna point all objects can be classified under this letters and there cannot be anything beyond because everything is can be expressed in terms of words and therefore nama comes into picture where naming is knowing and naming means i have to use the words and we use words means i have to use the sounds which is within the omkara itself so and there cannot be anything beyond all i tell is i can be silent so right if there is nothing beyond is only silence and therefore from the point of saguna upas saguna upasana that is higher from the point of nirguna upasana means nirguna upasana is knowledge only there is no upasana there it is understanding so from that point also it is brahma is param because there is nothing beyond that infinite because brahman means infinite and there cannot be anything infinite beyond infinite because if anything infinite is then infinite is no more infinite so therefore that is param supreme etat de etat hi eva aksharam gyatva yo yadichanti tasya tat says that indeed knowing which gyatva having known or knowing which so yaha he yat ichanti whatever he desires tasya tat he becomes that so now this is a phalam so he is talking about those who do the upasana of omkara whatever he desires he will become so if if the upasana is done they were you have to look look at it three ways if the upasana is done with a sakama that means a desire prompted upasana i want this therefore i am doing this that's why in the sankalpam you do says so what you say i want to uh, know my health or wealth and this and that i want this you yeah, i am therefore i am doing this upas this this uh, upasana so in that sankalpa you specify what exactly you are doing for what so if if it is motivated by a desire then you will achieve what you want because this is the highest upasana that one can think of so therefore if not in this life in the next life 
you will be able to get what, what you are de desiring for. In fact, this Upasana of Omkara, you can get to the highest position of what is that? Brahmaji. Brahmaji position also, you can get where everybody respects you and so on and so forth. There is nothing here, Nyagarbha position also. That's what in the in the Taittiriya Upanishad we, we learned that also. So that is Yadichanti, where you can gain anything you want, and that is the the meaning of this uh, purpose of this Omkara Upasana that you can do. So in the next sloka. He summarizes Yetadalambanam Sreshtam Yetadalambanam Sreshtam Yetadalambanam Param Yetadalambanam Param Yetadalambanam Yatva Brahma Loki Brahma Loki Mahiyate Together Yetadalambanam Sreshtam Yetadalambanam Param Yetadalambanam Jnatva Brahma Loki Mahiyate So Yetad Alambanam So Alambanam is as a support This is for the Upasana Yetad this Unkara Is taking this Unkara as the support for meditation Is Sreshtam Is superior than any other things So any other Upasanas so that's why Omkara is added with any mantra. Omkara gives you pranam. Pranam means the, the life for the mantra itself. So Om, Om Sri Ram, Jai Ram, no, whatever mantras that do, all that is follows after Omkara only. So Omkara is, is I said, is, is a pratima. With is, without any form, you are. Other one is the one with a form you are invoking. This is a formless form. So, this is the Sreshtam. This is the highest meditation that one can do on the Omkara. Etad Alambanam Sreshtam. Etad Alambanam Param. This is the Supreme, both from the point of the, uh, the lower and the higher. That is, the lower is low, lower Prakriti as well as higher Prakriti. And that we are going to see in the next lines. But that is supreme from everything, every point, from the Saguna point as well as from the Nirguna point. Etad alambanam jnatva brahma loki mahiyate. And taking this as a support, one can reach the highest. That's what is the Brahmaji's position, Brahma Loki, where you are respected. So once you become a Brahma, everybody respects, right? Because you are essentially the highest God that one can think of, identified as a form, a position, position located. The Ishwara is beyond. So it's, Brahmaji is the, the highest uh, God that one can become. Indra and everything else is in the intermediary. So if you want to become Brahmaji, where you know you you have you are also that post also some no, number of years you get appointment only <laughs> afterwards you retire and some other person will get that job so you know we have we have a when we do sankalpa we tell all those things who is brahmaji who is whatever who, who are the creation one no, all the all the things are specified there if you know no in the Sankalpa, you, next time you ask, he will tell you the <laughs> Vaivaswara, Manvantare, all those things, you know, who is the Manu, who is this in charge, who is that, all that is, and Kali Yuga, and Prathama Pada, right? <laughs> so we are in the first part of the Kali Yuga. <laughs> all that is being specified, because you want to make sure, the, whatever you do, the result comes to the proper person, address, <laughs> address has to be proper. So you have to give your Gotram, your Natchatram and your, your name so that you know, whoever uh, makes a record, like this guy is doing this, this puja and this one properly, if you do properly only, <laughs> you will get a result. If you don't do it properly, then you won't get it. Because this all the Sakama has to be done exactly as specified by the Vedas. And Brahma Loki Mahiyate, where you have gained a position where everybody respects you. So if you are seeking for respect, 
and recognition, fame, all that. Please start your Omkara Upasana and following the rules and regulations. Because it's Upasana, therefore you have to follow the rules and regulations. But if it is a Nishkama, where if you are looking for Nirguna Brahman, then this is not something to gain, but it is something to understand. Okay, same thing with the understanding of Omkara, so whole Mandukya Upanishad comes into picture, where that's the most scientific aspect, where A, Ukara, Makar, Akaram, Ukaram, Makaram is equated to the waking state and the dream state and the deep sleep state and Turiyam, the fourth state of consciousness, where Nanta Pragyana, Bahi Pragyana, Bahi Pragyana, all that is being described of that. That is the Nirgunopasana of understanding the essential truth of what is Omkara. So that's also been specified exactly in the Mandukya Upanishad. And that is Brahma Loki Mahiyate. If from the point of understanding, once you understand that, that Nirguna Brahma is the highest that one can reach, therefore you are glorified even while you are living. That is becomes the, the Jivan Mukta, once you have understood, you are glorified because you have reached the what can be, there is nothing else to reach, nothing more to know, nothing more to do also. So, Krutak Krutyaha means you have accomplished what is to be accomplished. So, that is. And uh, so, here both aspects are being pointed out by the Omkara. One is the lower Prakriti as well as the higher Prakriti, the Brahma Loka is from, from the point of lower Prakriti. This is in the 7th in the chapter we have. Bhumi rapo nalo vayu kammano buddhi revacha ahankara midiyami bhinna Prakriti ashtada. That is the lower Prakriti, that is called the apara Prakriti. And there is a para Prakriti, which is a higher Prakriti. Apare yamitastvanyam Prakritim vidhimi param jiva bhutam Dariyate Jagat. You both them? Mahabahu. Ah, that's why I left. Mahabahu is Arjuna there. Jagat. That which supports the whole universe. So that is the Apara, the, that is the Para Prakriti. Apara Prakriti is the lower one. So with that, he <coughs> talks about the Upasana on Omkara. And he knows that Nachiketa is not that much interested, he is already a mature person. Now, the actual teaching of Vedanta starts from Sloka 18 in the second chapter, second volley. Okay, let's do that. Najayate mriyate va vipaschitu. Jayate mriyate va vipaschitu. Nayam kutaschinna babhu va kaschitu. Nayam kutaschinna babhu va kaschitu. Ajo nitya shashvato yam purano. Ajo nitya shashvato yam purano. Nahanyate hanyamane sarire. Nahanyate hanyamane sarire. Together. Najayate mriyate va vipaschitu nayam kutaschinna babhu va kaschitu ajo nitya shashvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sarire we heard that before right <laughs> so just little bit change in the word instead of vipaschitu najayate mriyate va kadachitu nayam bhutva bhavita va nabhuya Ajo nitya shashvato yam purano nahanyati hanyamane sharire. This is Bhagavad Gita, Sloka 20 of second chapter. <laughs> That's what my note says. <laughs> These yellow steps are very good. <laughs> sticking. You know the story of this, this, uh, of this sticking, uh, this one? This is from 3M company and they were trying to find out what is the the gum that is the strongest gum and the fellow discovers the weakest gum <laughs> in 
instead of strongest gum, the fellow and the researcher, and they thought it's useless. Because this is not even sticking anywhere. <laughs> but they made millions out of this. Once I realized the application that hey, this is really not a gum, you can peel it out and nothing sticks there, and you can only stick there for some time. That has become the three and company has patented that. And that fellow, you know, I don't know whether he got any money or not or not. That discovery which thought they thought is useless has become earned more compared to any other uh, this one. So that is the sticker. Anyway, so in this, Najayate Mriyateva Vipaschit, Vipaschit is the main word here. Najayate Mriyateva Nayam Kutaschinna Vabhuva Kaschit, Ajoritya Shashvatoyam Purano Nahanyati Hanyamane Shariva. So here the interesting thing is, first we are talking about Brahman. And Brahman is infinite. Right? That's what Brahman is. Brahadhatu means it is big. It is big is, it's so big that it cannot be qualified. That's why it's called unqualifiedly big. So any big is a qualification. Big itself is a qualification, but noun qualifies the big also. So that's what is a you know, big mosquito or a big human being or a big mountain. So bigness also keeps changing about where it is, to which noun it is added. So big is getting qualified, but now we are talking about infinite, in all respects, so without any qualification, because qualification is makes it finite. So unqualifiedly big, so big, the, the adjective itself is noun, and that's called the Brahman. So Brahman word itself is uh, peculiarly generated. It is infiniteness from absolute sense, because any you know parallel lines meet infinity, so, but parallel lines are all a finite space between them, right? But therefore, this is infinite in all respects. So therefore, therefore what what? Therefore, it is indescribable. Number one. So whatever the description is, nothing to do with Brahma. But he wants to know, and we want to know too. <laughs> How do we know? So the teacher is using words to take the mind away from what he is looking for because I am looking for what is that Brahman I want to know and I am trying to Brahman as an objectify, is that Brahman, is that Brahman, I am trying to objectify that is the mentality of a student, a seeker. So now the scripture is trying to use words to take the mind away from that. So all the description is, so eto vacho nivartante aprapya manasasaha, the, wa, the words cannot reach there, the mind cannot reach there, navagachati and namanaha, neither the mind, neither the speech can go there, but yet we have pages and pages of scriptures, Vedanta, Upanishads, Bhashyas and all that, with that, about what? About that which cannot be described. So here he is using a a thing that we are familiar with and negating that it is not of that type. But yet it is there. It's not of that type, therefore it's not, it is not, it is, it is not a, 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 one can, it's not non-existing thing. It is an existing thing, but it is not something that you can, you are familiar with. Therefore, anything that comes under this category, it cannot be that. So essentially, a process of negation is used to identify that. Why is that? Because it's all pervading, everywhere present, all the time present. So what should I do to see? It is there to see for you. But my problem is not that I am seeing Brahman, not that I am not experiencing Brahman, not that I am able to understand Brahman, what my problem is, my mind is getting carried away with the superficial names and forms and only that which can be objectified because the mind can only know what can be objectified. Mind cannot know without objectification. So any object that I see, it's only I'm looking for that, I can know this, I know this, I know this. But therefore, mind can only know things that are objectifiable things. Therefore, this which is beyond any objectification, therefore, navagachati, mind cannot go there. Because mind can go only that which can be objectified. 
and anything that can objectify it has what are called six modifications. They are called the, 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 uh, what is it called? Ah, uh, yeah, I know. But what, what is the technical term? So it undergoes mutation. It's continuously changing. Therefore, it has six modifications, as he's saying, asti, bhati, vardhati, viparinamate, apakshiyate, vinasyati. These are six modifications of any object. Asti, it exists. Okay, we are not talking about non-existent things. So first it has to exist. Right? Glass exists, table exists, E exists, this exists, carpet exists. Anything in the universe exists. Galaxy exists. Whatever is, exists only. Non-existence cannot be known. Cannot be talked about also. So, first thing about object is it has to exist. And what is an object? An object is defined, you know, if I told all these things, but the object is defined as Praga Bhava Pratyogini. This is Nihaya's definition. Prak Abhava Pratyogini. That is, it was there, there was a time where it was not there. In essence, is, there was a time where it was not there. That means there was an origin for it. So, Asti Jayate. Jayate means it has a birth. Beginning is there for any object. Any object that you see. That's why we talk about how did this universe came. Because we are seeing it Asti. Therefore, we want to know what is <laughs> when it is born, when is, when is this universe formed, whether it's a big bang or this bang or that. Therefore, next modification is the, the, the birth of it, asti, jayate, say vardhati, it grows, and viparinamate, it undergoes continuously a modification, it grows and then once you reach mature, you make a maturity of different types, viparinamate, and then once you start old age, it says apachiyati, it says a deterioration, and then vinasyati, and then gone. So this is the whole cycle. This uh, Hare Krishna people have this picture from a baby to all the old man and then coming back at the beginning, <laughs> reverse process. So, Punarapi Varanam, Punarapi Janaram, and this goes on. So, these six states of modifications for any object in the world, and here that part it is not of that type. So, anything that you are looking for that comes under this category, it cannot be of that type. So, it is a negation. Through the process of negation, I have to ascertain what is that. So, now you can reject almost all philosophical traditions that involves where moksha involves going somewhere. That means it has a beginning. <laughs> right? <laughs> I had to go to Vaikuntha or Kailasa or somewhere. So, there is a beginning for it. When there is a beginning, then Asti, Jayate, all those modifications have to come in. Since that which has a beginning has to die. Right? Krishna says himself, that is Jatasya Hidruva Mruchihu Dravanjanma Mrutasya Cha. That which has a beginning has to have an end. Because the glass has a beginning, it has to have an end on the other side. So, and only philosophies that have this kind of thing, even Christianity have, we have no beginning before, but we have eternal <laughs> on this side, because we don't know where we come, we don't have past life, but we have a future life, because if you believe in Christ, you go to eternal heaven, if you don't believe in Christ, you go to eternal hell, right? <laughs> So, we have eternity on the other side, but what happened, where were you before? No, we, we don't have past life. So, so, we have only one life, but the other end is, so it is called uh, one end, a semi-infinite model. <laughs> so, that's also the moksha of most of the places where you go, to go somewhere and then you live comfortably, eternally there, I guess. <laughs> because, uh, what is it, taddhama paramam mama? What is this look? Gatva anavartante taddhama paramam mama. Having gone there, there is no return back from me. So, one uh, person, I think it's in the, in the Bhagavatam story, says, he's, uh, 
He never thought about Narayana and all that, but he gave names of all his kids, one Narayana, one uh, all the names of gods. And suddenly, b before he he left, he, he was dying or he died. He called his son Narayana, and then he died because of his past. All the actions are not worthy to go to Narayana. So Yama people came. But Vaikunti, the, the Vishnu's Dutas also came there. He says, how come you guys have come? And we, it is, he is our property, this guy, because he has not done anything good. <laughs> so he says, no, no, no. He, he, in the end, he said, Narayana, please read Bhagavad Gita. Antakale, antakale He says, last line, if you think of me, eh, you will reach me. But he doesn't even know who is Narayana. He was only he was only calling the name. But he may not know Narayana. But Narayana, Narayana knows his name. <laughs> so if you call, okay, Narayana is a common name in India. If you shout Narayana, all Narayanas will turn, <laughs> right? Because they think you are there. You are calling them. So the other Lord Narayana also thinking that he may be calling me. So please bring him. <laughs> so we have come. So. Anyway, they have higher authority, so at least he told, so we will at least go and show him Vaikuntha and then bring him back. Then you guys, you will take over. After that, you can take him, whatever he wants. But at least he called, so he has done something, so we will take him there. So they took him there. And once he says, hey, let me go and see him. At least <laughs> this man <laughs> was intelligent enough. So I want to see him. At least I came all the way. Let me see. So he saw Lord Narayana and Lakshmi obviously sitting there and all the uh, uh, Angama is going on. And he saw Darshan of Lord Narayana on the Vaikuntha. Maybe I don't know which is in the Vaikuntha. Then I say, hey, come on, come on, let's go. He says, you better read Bhagavad Gita again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> having reached my state, no return back, he says. <laughs> That's what Narayana told. You guys better read that. So I have come here, therefore there is no return back. But anyway, that was the statement. Here, once we reach that state of understanding, there is no return back. Because once we understood, there is no ignorance cannot come back. That is what the real meaning of that. Here it is, Najayati Mriyateva Vipaschit. Vipaschit is, is the knowledge or Chaitanya Swarupam. That which is of the nature of consciousness. So here Yamadharma Raja is talking about that which is of the, that highest truth is what is that? So he is giving a, a Swarupa Lakshanam of that. What is that? It is of the nature of consciousness. And that is the definition of Brahman. Brahman that cannot be defined. One of the Mahavakya is Pragnanam Brahma. Consciousness is Brahman. Brahman means infinite. Right? So here is a very peculiar statement. It says consciousness is infinite. That means there is no place where consciousness is not. So I think I mentioned before is the way it is defined as it is a Swarupa Lakshanam. What is a Swarupa Lakshanam? It is a necessary and sufficient requirement for it to be what it is. That's called Swarupa Lakshanam. So therefore, that's called necessary and sufficient qualification in mathematics where it is converse has to be true. Converse statement is has to be true for it. And for it to be to the way the Vedanta defines Brahman in a converse way, that whatever there is a consciousness, that is Brahman. So, consciousness, vipaschitu, is Brahman, means infinite. So, how can that be possible? Because we, everything we see is inert or only, inert things only. And how can that consciousness be Brahman? So, the question automatically comes to a person who is looking at this whole world of objects which are nothing but inert only, including everybody. Because all I am seeing is only body. I am not seeing consciousness. I cannot see consciousness because I cannot objectify consciousness. All I can see is I am the only conscious entity in the universe, not you. <laughs> From your point, you are the only conscious entity in the world. And that consciousness that you are is Brahman, is infinite. So how can that be? Logically, it doesn't sound. 
but it's not the logical. Says Naisha Tarki na Matira Apaneya. Did we do that? We did that. We did the last time. Naisha Tarki na Matira Apane. It is not objectifiable by logically you cannot you cannot prove it or logically you cannot disprove it. Also the statement because consciousness is everywhere. And consciousness expressed as existence in the objects because the equipments are not conducive to express consciousness in that form. I follow. It all all the, the consciousness is everywhere. Existence is same as consciousness. Now that which is all the objects that are raising in the in the consciousness that objects can express or reflect depending upon the capacity of the object either the consciousness or just the only existence it can express. So from the point of all the inert objects there is no subtle body there for consciousness to express the subtle body also has to be there it's only that can reflect and the reflected consciousness is what we call say I am this I am that I am that is all reflected consciousness pure consciousness doesn't say I am this <laughs> because it is infinite it doesn't have instrument to even to say it because there is no difference of any kind in that you want to have the mind it doesn't have even a mind so, because mind is separate from the rest of it, right? So, it doesn't have anything. It is undifferentiated or undifferentiable consciousness itself. And But if there is everything is consciousness, uh, the existence itself is expressed in Brahman, but existence itself cannot establish itself that I exist as it is. Consciousness has to join it to establish the existence of anything also. Therefore, the knowledge Nama comes into picture in all the objects where I, a conscious entity, know this, 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 this. Right? So, in the knowledge of this, this, all the whole universe, idam sarvam, this entire universe, I have to come into picture to say the world is, because the world doesn't say I am there. Without me, or without me, without the presence of conscious entity to say it, the world existence of the world is indeterminate problem. It cannot be proved or disproved. It's called indifferentiable, anirvachaniyam. So only vachanam comes, expression comes, nama comes, naming comes, knowing comes, only with the consciousness interacting with the existence of the object. So epistemologically, existence of the object transferred as though existence of the thought and existence of the thought is illumined by my consciousness for me to be conscious of the existence of the thought which is reflection of the object out there. Well, that is the essence. So therefore, vipaschita is pure consciousness that is pervading all over. It is na jayati mriyati va kadachitu. Not kadachita, I'm sorry, vipaschita. <laughs> no, it is neither the beginning nor an end. That which has no beginning cannot have end also. So, na jayati mriyati va. Nayam kutaschita. Na babu kaschidu, na I am putaschidu. It is nowhere anything that I can say. It is this, it is that, it's there. Anywhere you can point out, nowhere in the universe you can point out this is consciousness. This rules out any scientific discovery of I want to find out what is consciousness. People are trying, scientists are trying now and they are trying to objectify consciousness but once you objectify it is inert only, it cannot be. The one who is investigating what is consciousness is consciousness. So the one who is looking for is the one that is the the seeker itself is the sort there and he cannot become a sort. <laughs> so consciousness cannot be objectified as it is. So now I am trying to find out what is that this is the way biggest problem of realization is. I am looking for Brahman. The very looking for Brahman makes you away from Brahman. <laughs> Why? Because you are looking for something somewhere. The I am Brahman has to be understood. How can I be Brahman? 
That's why we need more Vedanta study. <laughs> How can I be Brahman? Is? How can you not be Brahman? And one Lakshmi Dharakavi says in the Kadoham Nakudam Brahma. How can I not be Brahman? Because the whole universe is coming from me, it's sustained by me, and it's going into me. So I cannot, how can I not be Brahman? Because I'm the one who is creating the whole universe. And uh, that's a sloka. Advaita. Advaita. I mean, Advaita. <laughs> okay. My mind is, memory is going down. Okay, anyway, na jayati muyati eva vipaschitu, nayam kutaschitu. So, no object in the universe can be pointed out anywhere at any time, obviously, as this is Brahman. Because the one who is trying to point out is the Brahman. And the consciousness is the Brahman. So, na babu vakaschitu. So, therefore, that it is, it is na babu, it has no origin of any kind, any time. So, it has no beginning and therefore, it cannot be born of anything, it cannot be anything anywhere in the universe and that is the nature of the Brahman. So, implication is, whatever that comes under these categories cannot be Brahman. But Brahman, in, in, interesting point you have to see, Brahman means infinite. It cannot exclude anything. If you exclude anything, it cannot be Brahman. Because by exclusion, Brahman becomes a finite. At the same time, we have to exclude this. So, how do we exclude this at the same time, include this? That's why Vedanta is subtle. The problem is, the reason is, I had to reject it at the same time, I had to cannot reject it. Because the very existence of any name and a form is supported by Brahman. At the same time, it is not that which you are seeing it. Because whatever you are seeing is objective, is, is Jayati, Mriyati, that which is born and, and there. Therefore, all those modifications are pertaining only to the things that are superimposed on top of Brahman. As though, it's not top means not something on top of something. So, it's not, the lid is not on top of this one, you cannot say. It's not like, it is as though, it is appearing as though on top, it's called Adhyasa. Adhyasa is error of superimposition, where I am superimposing something other than itself as it is. Brahman himself as it is, but I am superimposing or taking that Brahman as not Brahman, but it is this and it is that which is different from this and it is different from that. And this and that has Jayate, Mriyateva, all those things. So, this is where the knowledge has to come into picture. So, when I am looking for Brahman, I am not looking for something, an objectifiable thing, but I can look for Brahman in a very objectifiable thing. Follow them? Because Brahman is the very substratum or the essence because of which object is what it is. And therefore, this is the statement, here is this where the teaching comes, because that's why it is a very subtle teaching where you need a proper teacher. That's what the Vyama Dharma Raja says also, is Ajo Nitya Shashvata Oyam Purano. That doesn't mean that it is non-existing. At the same time, it is there. It is Ajaha. Ajaha is that which has no birth. And Nityaha, it is there eternally present. So, it is now Udeti Nastameti. Neither it can be born or it can die. There is no beginning for it, no end for it. So, how do you say there is no beginning for an end for it? So, I have realized on such and such a date, somebody has sent an email at, <laughs> in the Advaitin list long time ago. <laughs> says, on that and such a day, I have realized, sir, you please recognize me that I have realized Brahman. <laughs> so, if, does that occur like an incident in life? So, uh, people give all sorts of examples, you know. On that day, I have realized that it is not a snake, but a rope. Before that, it was a snake only. I thought then I put shed light on it. Then suddenly, the, sh the snake is no more. I realize on particular day and time, by shedding light on it, then I know it is a rope. Is that true, right? After all, that happens, isn't that? <laughs> so, but what happened to the snake? <laughs> 
snake went somewhere else. <laughs> if snake went somewhere else, it was a real snake. <laughs> so, the super impressed. I thought it is a snake, but actually it was robe all the time only. Never a snake. So, what was there all the time is only a robe, but it is my mistaken notion that it is a snake, therefore I am taking it as a snake. So, it is my mistaken notion because of not knowing the truth as the truth that it is all pervading Brahman that is there as the very support for the whole universe. I am taking the names and forms which has Jayati, Brahmati and all that, all those beginning, end and all that. The whole life itself is in this level. Looks very logical, unconvincing, all that. But once the class is over, the back to again routine, same thing happens and all the worries and problems of the life becomes, it's not so easy. You think it's so easy to understand. Yes, yes, that's very clear, right? It's very clear. But as soon as I can guarantee, as soon as this <laughs> class is over, the mind goes back to its routine habits. The problem is that the clarity still is immature. So what should I do? Attend more classes. <laughs> this is the only way, but constant smarana has to be there. That has to be sink in. So anyway, that's it. Ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na hanyati hanyamane sharire. When this body is destroyed, that doesn't get destroyed okay? because that is eternal, because it is nityam. So, in this loka, he has pointed out that it is something beyond any objectifiable thing, but at the same time, it is of the nature of consciousness. And But it is evident in everything that you perceive also. So it's not different because it's a Brahman, therefore it is infinite. It is there, but at the same time, I am not able to see it. That's why it's called Jnana Chachu. A wisdom eye is required to see what is there compared to what I see. What I see is, eyes can only see names and forms and colors and so on. But that beyond the names and forms and colors is what need to be seen. In this uh, Swami Paramarthananda, I have to give a credit for him, and he differentiated the, the consciousness as provides, I think, a steps. It says, it is not a part, property, or product of anything. This is essentially in the Jayati, Mriyateva, Kadasit, the same statement. It says, what is consciousness? It is not a part, it is not a product, or a property of anything. But yet, it pervades every object, providing the support for the object. So, in the form of existence, it gives the support. In the form of a knowledge that I know that object, it gives the support. Because without my knowledge, the existence of the object cannot be established. So, consciousness comes from the knowledge point and its a rupa comes from the existent point. So, Nama and Rupa is coming in the consciousness and existence are coming in the part in defining the object. So, it is, it's not a part or a property or the product of it. The existence is not a part, is not a product or a property of this glass, but glass exists. Right? So, where is that existence? It's not a part here, this part exists, that part exists, every part exists, every atom exists, everything exists in this. At the same time, existence is not a property of this. Why existence is not a property? In Advaita Makaranda, that was a text. <laughs> in the Advaita Makaranda, the one that I mentioned also is from Advaita Makaranda. In the Advaita Makaranda, he answers the question very beautifully. If existence is a property, suppose, say because the glass exists, so existence is there. So is it a part or is it a property? So he says no. So why not? Why can't existence be a property? So it is where some of the philosophy says that which exists has to have guna properties. He has Ananda Kalyana Gunashrayam. Ramanuja Bhagavan Ramanuja says is infinite auspicious properties it has. That is the nature of the Raman and that he exists. So, he is trying to glorify that in, in terms of properties, but existence cannot be have any property. Why? Because if it has a property, 
if it is a property, let's say, if it is a property, it should have a locus for the property. Property can only rest with some kind of locus. And the locus should be different from the property, <laughs> right? Say so blue, blue lotus. The blue is a color which has to have a locus in the lotus. So the lotus should be different from blueness. And therefore, lotus is rest in the in the in uh, the blueness rests in the lotus, and lotus has to be different from the blue. That's the, although they are inseparable, they are different. So, if existence is a property, its locus should be something which is a noun, which is an object that has the existence as its property, right? And what is that? It should be different from existence. That which is different from existence only non-existence because anything else has an existence. So that which is different from existence can only be non-existence. And you are telling me non-existence exists, <laughs> number one, and that exist non-existence has a property of existence. And the whole thing is a ridiculous statement. <laughs> Therefore, existence cannot be a property. And therefore, that existence is neither a part, nor a product, nor a property of any object. Right? And existence pervades the object, because everywhere it's subject. This exists, that exists, every part exists. So existence pervades the object, number two. And this pervasive existence provides existence to the object. <laughs> So, if I remove the existence out of it, I mean, there is no blast, that means. So, that existence pervades the object and provides the existence, the very existence to the object. Okay. And if the object is removed, existence still exists. <laughs> because existence cannot be removed anywhere. And the same way happens whenever existence and consciousness, because every existence is established by having the consciousness of its existence. Okay? So these are the, there are five items that he proposes for both existence and consciousness to differentiate what exactly is that. And that is the nature of existence here. That is about Atma. So this is the first loka of where the, the real teaching of Yamadhar Maharaja starts to start with the Achiketas. So in that sloka, all the six modifications, it's not of that which undergoes six modifications. That's what is ruled out in that. So next, next sloka, 19. Hanta chen manyate hantum, Hanta chen manyate hantum, Hatas chen manyate hatam, Hatas chen manyate hatam, Ubete na Ubautauna vijanito, Ubautauna vijanito, Nayam hanti na hanyate, Nayam hanti na hanyate, together. Hanta chain manyate hantum, Hatas chain manyate hatam, Ubauta navijani to Nayam hantina hanyate. So, in this sloka, using some kind of analogy, the Yamadharma Raja negates two aspects of it. One is, it is neither a karta nor a bhokta. This is, is akartaham, abhuktaham, hami vaham avyeha. I am never a doer nor an enjoyer. So now you remember how we are defining Brahman. We are defining Brahman using what we are familiar with and negating whatever we are familiar with is not of that type so that we can shift our mind to that because of which all these things are possible. So that's how you have to look at it. So if I say I am doing is only wrong notion because I am cannot do anything. <laughs> I am as it is, is the nature of consciousness that I am, existence that I am is never a doer and therefore never an enjoyer. So why am I born? You remember all these cock and bull stories of I have Sanchita karma and I have Praradha karma, I have Agami karma and Gohan Panarabjaranam. Nothing of that sort. 
that's why this is the philosophy is restricted to only those people who can appreciate this because i am never a doer how can i have sanchita karma how can i have prarabdha karma i have something so those karmas never belong to me so it is example you know when the fellow had a villager he had a, he was carrying a big trunk and then he is catching a train <laughs> and and then he see everybody is bringing lot of big luggages and all that he felt pity for the train so he anyway he sat in the train and he wanted to help the train so he took the box and put it on his head so that he can relieve some weight for the train so somebody said why don't you put it down no 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 i want to help the train so that's how we are putting on top of our head the actions that are being done by the prakriti itself without our this one input and taking i am the one who is doing it and suffering the consequence of carrying the big luggage on our head <laughs> so that is what is happening who is who is having karma oh this is my our prarabdha karma what do i do then suffer <laughs> that's part of the karma of the fellow who is putting a big box on his head and sitting in the train to help the train and the same way here is analogy is given hanta chen manyati hantum it's an example here where the one who says i have killed or the slayer who thinks that i have slayed somebody or slaying somebody is never na hanyati anto he never do, doesn't do that slaying business so he is not really slayer that means he is not a karta okay hatasya manyati anto the other fellow thinks i have been killed so he is you are killing me you know, people not killing me people say you are killing me that being killed is also a notion in the mind he is because he is experiencing something and that experience is also not real so here it says the uh, anta chain manyati hantum the one who thinks that he is is indirectly saying that you are not a karta and you are not a bhokta so is indirectly you know the example somebody gave is, is uh, uh, people say ram rama is very intelligent but that's not really true <laughs> so what does it mean rama is not intelligent not i'm not talking about lord rama i'm talking about <laughs> rama swami maybe <laughs> somebody so it is yamadharma raja is put it indirectly the one who thinks that he is a killer he is not really correct ubha ubha uto na vijanaati they both don't know the one who says i have done it and the one says i am experiencing he says both do not know na yam hanti na hanyate neither one kills nor one gets killed neither one does nor one experiences neither one is akarta one ne, neither one is karta nor bhokta so whenever i have a notion that i have to do something red signal should come now this is all statements very good for us <laughs> yamadar maharaj to nachiketas but for us says i had to do something I have to teach. I have to listen. I have to write. I have to prepare all these. I, 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 all those business from morning to evening. Whole rat place that we are doing. If I don't do it, who is going to do it? I have to take care of my child. I have to take care of my wife. I have to take go to office. I have to do this. Then what is it? Pragutche eva. That's what is the kind. The karma niya. Karma ya pasch. What is that? Uh, anyway, I can't. <laughs> Come on, one who sees the non-doership, well-doing is going on. In essence, karma ni akar maya paschit sahabuddhiman, right? Manusheshu. So the well-doing is not not that it, nothing is doing. You the prakruti eva karma eva cha karma ni krima na ni sarva cha prakruti itself does automatically what need to be done because I am not I am not the one who is pumping the blood day in and day out. It does it automatically whether I am awake or asleep. Your heart is pumping, digestive system functioning, excretory system functioning. Everything goes automatically. But i they oh i have to do this i have to do this so it is only a notional understanding taking myself i am this body that's what the problem is 
whenever whenever i say that i have to do i am crystallizing that this body is me therefore i have to do it this body belongs to prakriti right it's part of bo mera aap you know hello why you come on over there it is part of the prakriti only panchabhutas made up of all that so therefore whenever the idea comes into my mind idea comes notion comes it's a notion because it is not true comes into my mind i have to understand that is not really true because scripture says so. why because when i say i am i am is subject and this is an object number 1 because this is a body idam shariram kaunteya so this is a body this mind this intellect this body bmi bmi is only equipments we have and that's what does the actions the body mind and intellect are there but when i say i am this body this mind are using this body this mind i am doing it it becomes a problem only under my guidance without me participating a blessing only let the body mind intellect do what is required for the situation that means i don't take ownership put the box down let the train carry the box that's what is to be understood because i have to do in the sense of the prakriti propels me to do it nahi ka shikshanam api jatu tushtasya karma krutu not a moment i can remain aloof i have the work has to be done the the system demands so the system local system responds to the demand of the totality so that goes on as the cycle so how should i act so this is where the drama comes into picture life of drama i'm going to tell this because this is important from application point otherwise we can go to shlokas <laughs> so how do i do this you do it exactly the way you act in a drama so how do you do in a drama you are taking a role of a particular role and play the role the vesham vesham is the costume you are wearing so you have wore this costume of body mind and intellect and you are taking a role in that scene and whatever the scene demands you have to play that role as demanded by the scene because that you have entered the stage with the role so as long as you are on the stage that means the stage of this life with the body mind intellect i perform like an actor but when i am performing an actor as a role i should not forget this idea that i am really an actor and not the role <laughs> that's a problem <laughs> the problem is we forget that we are acting on the scene forget that we are really not the role but we are only vesham we have put in we are playing the role of a king there in the scene and i am not really king i don't have any kingdom there for me but this is the drama that is going on and i had to play the role and my own friend is the enemy there i had to kick him left and right whatever it is part of the drama outside we are bye bye <laughs> outside but on the scene i had to play the role so there is a boss this is a this one this is a wife don't kick your wife <laughs> this is a, all these roles in life i can play knowing very well i am an actor not the role so when i have this knowledge of what is that na jayate mruhyate va kadachit nayam bhutva na bhavita va na bhu kadachit ki vipaschit <laughs> i am that conscious entity consciousness is unlimited i am the tall man it's me only in that form it's me only in the other form even the terrorist terrorist also is me only obama is also me what is the other guy is also me <laughs> that understanding but at the same time i had to play the role properly as a father i had to play the role of a father what father's duties when i am playing i am only playing that means i am playing the role problems of the role belongs to the role not to me <laughs> i may not i don't take when i am playing the role of a father 
I am only for role of a father, not an employee anymore. <laughs> so I don't carry the previous scene into this scene and make a mess of this scene. <laughs> so when I am playing that role, I should have the presence of mind to play that role only without getting mixed up with the other roles. Then the role becomes beautiful. Only when I say when I go home and I bring the office there into the home, when I go to the office, I bring my family there into the office and then make a mess of the office and mess of the home. So why I'm I am changing the scenes, but I am not changing the role that I am playing properly. So drama only beautiful if I play each role to the best that I can. With that, let's play our roles properly until next week and we will do the Purnamada and then end this sloka. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Masishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha 